It's how life comes to us, right? Through awareness, we acknowledge, and then we accept. And it's the wrestle between the acknowledgement and the acceptance. The angst that I was dealing with was the fact that I was unable to protect my mom. We've been so cruelly conditioned by the world to yeah. never deal with grief, right. Right. never deal with our emotions, really. And that's what it comes down to. Hey, and welcome to the Living Richly podcast. We are so excited to have you here with us today. Uh, Eric and I are, are really excited about today's yeah. episode, and we're going to get into why in just a moment. Uh, we are going to be talking with somebody that really goes back with you, goes back a lot, and a we'll tell that time. story, yep. uh, and then has a really interesting connection with me that came about from the podcast itself. Uh, but we are going to be talking today about grief. And every single one of us experiences grief at some point. Uh, we all may take the journey of how we live out that grief, but we experience pain and suffering. And our guest today is a pain and loss specialist. Don Lachance uh, is a, a gentleman who knows about grief firsthand. Uh, he has struggled with addictions. Uh, he, he really began his addictive struggles uh, at the age of 12. Uh, and he'll share a bit of that story. And for about 20 years, years battled with drug and alcohol addictions before finally getting clean and sober and has been doing that now for 38 years in wow. recovery it's been incredible don it's so good to have you here on this on the show today welcome thank you thank you very much it's it's really great to be here um this is this is very freeing for me mm. on many fronts um simply because the message that we get to carry to people who find themselves grieving um, it is an important one because yeah. we've been so cruelly conditioned by the world to yeah. never deal with grief, right. Right. never deal with our emotions, really. And that's what it comes down to. So yeah. thanks for the opportunity to uh, come in here today and share with your audience. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're so thrilled to have you here. And we're going to get into our, our the story and the conversation. Uh, I want to kick us off yeah. with uh, uh, how the hell does a guy like you, given your background, what's the Coles Notes version of you ending up as a grief and loss specialist and helping people the way you do today? Great question, uh, Eric, because, you know, coming through the lifestyle I came through and then um, embracing a, a pathway to recovery, uh, there were a lot of things going on in my life. And I've got a good friend that, um, you know, has been working with the marginalized uh, most of his life and uh, was looking to take up a position as the chaplain at the mission. And uh, he said, look, I'd like you to vet a course for me because uh, I'm thinking of taking this. So I said, well, fire it off and let me have a look at it. Yeah. And uh, as I began to look into the course, I just began to realize how incomplete I was emotionally with so many relationships, regardless of some of the brutal recovery that I'd yeah. already experienced, mm -hmm. just relationally how lost I was. And uh, the, the term is really being incomplete emotionally. Mm -hmm. So my next comment to him was like, if you go do this, let me know because I want to do this. Too. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's powerful. I remember years ago, my mentor, Jim Harrington, it was in the early stages of his influence in my life and the work that he helped me do. And I was processing a ton of stuff that I'd never dealt with, uh, tons of suffering that I just managed to bury and keep at bay, or at least I thought I was for a very long time. And I remember him first saying to me, he says, it's okay, Eric, you just haven't developed the emotional maturity to learn how to process this stuff. And I remember my first response was like, fuck you. I'm not, <laughs> oh, so, are you calling me emotionally oh, immature? Yeah, basically, such, such an emotionally wrong. mature thing. It was a say. very <laughs> yeah, nice, nice done. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we started the episode, or I started the episode by saying that everybody experiences grief. Mm. Uh, and yet there, I think that there are a lot of misconceptions around what grief is. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of misunderstanding of when we use that language. Um, how do you define grief? Grief is a normal and natural uh, e event, and um, what surfaces for us emotionally is also natural and normal. Uh, the difference being most of us are conditioned not to deal with the emotional discomfort, so we become extremely adept at dodging it and and not really acknowledging what was happening 
so that we can get to the place of acceptance and and really begin to move through. And I, I used the term earlier on when I was just talking about like the Coles note version of how I got here in regards to uh, being emotionally incomplete. Mm. Yeah. And uh, it all ties into that. So, mm. yeah. We, and, uh, so uh, I'm curious when you say that emotionally incomplete, we've talked many times on the show about, and this isn't limited to our male audience, but I think a lot of men really struggle when it comes to getting in touch emotionally with what's going on beyond their their mind mm-hmm. and the fix it all approach, right? the one emotion that we uh, know really well, which is rage. Uh, that one we're all very comfortable with or not comfortable, but acquainted with. Yeah. Um, how, do you see that in your work with male, female clients? Like the, the emotionals, I, I call it like, um, well, immaturity, you call it in, incomplete. How do you see that show up for men? Do you find they struggle more? Um, I, I don't know that they struggle more because grief and loss, like here's the difference. Like grief, we typically want to attribute to the death of a loved one yes. mm. or, you know, s- something along those lines, like losing a kid. Mm. And, you know, we, we grieve deeply. The same emotional turmoil surfaces with any other loss. And like th- there are so many other variances of loss when you think about loss of self-worth, mm. loss of innocence, right. loss of value, mm. loss of income, a, a divorce, a separation right. is loss. And that same emotional loss turmoil. Loss of friendship. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Anything you can look at, loss of a job. Right. You know? Anything that has you and and we're anchored, we're emotionally incomplete because we're anchored to that pain around six words. Different, better, more, hopes, dreams, and expectations. All right, you got to slow okay, down. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> easy, easy, yeah, easy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right? Like, holy shit. And it's so, been a great show. Thank most, you, folks. <laughs> most of our audience are really smart. Yeah. Okay. The two of us, not so much. Yeah. So you're talking to us too, and you know, uh, right? So maybe uh, take, t- maybe uh, highlight those again, but then a little slower and, and maybe a quick one word sentence on what each one of them is. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to table on that front that we can look at as an example, maybe? Well, so, per- I mean, hey, listen, I was thinking this actually, I mean, uh, and my story is there's all kinds of loss at different places, mm. but certainly one that I've shared about many times is the loss of my daughter. Right. And I know yeah. that my experience with grief in that moment was, um, uh, I don't know how to word this. It was veiled in the religiosity mm. of my, uh, as a pastor of, of needing, wow. of having faith. Right. So we don't grieve as those who have no hope, uh, as, as the uh, good book says. And so, which for the p- person who doesn't understand that phrase, almost was meant to mean we're not supposed we're not to, grieve to grieve that, because this person has gone to heaven. Uh, yeah. And, and I had to be uh, celebrating. And I had just, when, when Katie died, I had uh, just recently early, a few months earlier, well, about a, about a year earlier had become the pastor uh, for the first time, the lead pastor. I was the guy in the church up in Iroquois Falls. And all of a sudden I had to demonstrate faith mm. And so I didn't grieve properly in a healthy way, my daughter's death for probably 25 years, 20 years anyway. Yeah, so let's use that as an example. Walk me through the five, the five words, six words, six 72 words. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It, you know, and, and, and the words will keep popping up yeah, depending yeah. on how courageous you are and how deeply you want to delve into yep. the pain. Right. Mm, really right. is what it all comes down to. And, and having somebody that you trust enough yeah. right. to open up to about some of those things, yeah. you know. So let's look at, at, at the death of your daughter <clears throat> and the role that you were fulfilling at the time yeah. in having to demonstrate this courage and this incredible, undeniable faith that your congregation is supposed to be looking to you to be able to kind of step into, right. you know. And you're robbing yourself of the true depth of what's unfolded mm-hmm. in your life. Yeah. And looking back at the different, better, more, where were you emotionally when it came to, and, and here's where we talk about being emotionally incomplete, the things that you got robbed of, of being able to share with your daughter. Yeah. 
the things that you wish could have been different. Mm. Because now we begin to look at really the complexity of the relationship and, and, and how, how did it unfold and, you know, the fights that we have that never get resolved and the arguments and some of the things that we know our kids hold against us. And like, so it, it, it gets right down into the crevice of our very beings, like our very soft spots, yeah. right? It, it almost, is, is, it, is that like, <clears throat> would you consider those some of the regrets that we hang on to that when you say the the better, more? Uh, different better more different better more like that we we look back and we say we like i wish that would have been different i wish i would have had that conversation if only i had resolved that conflict or if only i had expressed to them what i is that what we're talking about here absolutely yeah there's there's a great degree of that but it's it's a very personal thing right you know it's it's not a regret like because you can work through that because we coach people mm. on on how to complete emotionally yeah. and and it doesn't matter that the people are no longer with us it's the emotional realm where everything is like we're held captive and right. like we we just continue to suffer in silence right yeah. we're we're in that deep deep pain so much private pain yeah. so much it, private it, pain and it and it is you're you're right we suffer in silence and one of the things certainly that brought me to a place of healing was the use of therapy and and mm. you know working with Dr. Sherry in particular uh, and how she was able to help me process and understand, uh, you know, uh, to where my emotions were, what what I did lack in that point, even using language of PTSD around a number of the experiences that I had. Uh, there was a number of deaths that happened within a short time period uh, around the same time as my daughter uh, and what that was like. And, and what I heard you say, though, when you shared those words, and it was interesting you used the word regret because I was the word that was coming to my mind was, uh, and we just did an episode on this was reflection mm. was almost that is, is part of the grieving process is thinking through those words in a reflective state of, of really taking the time to contemplate what does it mean to experience, you know, what could have been or what didn't happen or how I showed up or how I didn't show up or all of that. See, it, it it's interesting because everything you're describing right now is all cerebral. Mm. Right. Yes. You know. Yeah. Right. All, all of the thinking <laughs> oh, it's through. Very, right. Yeah. And we, we very tactical. Like, <laughs> well, because it's it's safe there, right? right. We yeah. can, you know, you talk about men, like, you know, are are they trapped more than other people? And and the answer is possibly. Yeah. Uh, they can be because I I know a lot of very empathetic men, like right. you know, right. I'm I'm watching degrees of empathy rise in 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 you guys, like yeah. that maybe had never been unleashed or or freed the way you express it now yeah. right and and the hard part of of us working with people is getting them to move that 13 inches in their body from their heads to their hearts yeah right the vital it's, penny drop it, right yeah like you know a, a 13 inch journey but some of the longest journeys that people will ever take because yeah. we're deconstructing so much stuff once yeah. we become aware of it it's how life comes to us right through awareness we acknowledge and then we accept. And it's the wrestle between the acknowledgement and the acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. You've got quite a journey of, of loss. Um, you've gone through a lot of uh, different experiences. We kind of, again, um, tease that out a little bit at the beginning of the show. Um, you know, for somebody to begin drinking, uh, and drug use at such a young age, uh, typically we don't wake up one day and say, Hey, I think I'll just start drinking and you know, yeah. getting high. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. There's things that lead to that. Um, however comfortable you are in sharing some of that. I know that you do share openly in a lot of platforms, but maybe share a little bit of your journey of loss and of some of the lessons that you learned through that, if you don't mind. Holy crap. I don't mind at all. Thank you for the platform for me to be mm. able to do this because mm. I know, you know, I, I get to speak and I share openly, uh, every chance I get. And, uh, you, you've got an audience that is hungry for this yeah. and mm. it's, growing and so i'm very grateful that you're providing you. me with a place to be mm. able to do well, this so too. i look at that and i guess my real journey uh began early early on mm. just with parents who were alcoholics and uh just the violence mm. that comes with that lifestyle yeah. with mm. dysfunctional parents right and remember waking up at the age of seven one night <clears throat> where um my dad had my mom up against the wall and he was beating her and i came downstairs because i heard like the commotion right ran into the kitchen and grabbed the butcher knife and went at him tried Mm. to kill him 
Like it was seven years old. That, yeah. And that was my goal, right? Like yeah. I, I just wanted to kill him. Yeah. He was a phys ed instructor in the army and um, wasn't long. Didn't take him very much to just kind of throw me into a corner of the room. And uh, like, I, I remember hitting the wall and just kind of slumping there. And I, I, I wasn't every ounce of worth that could live in a little seven year old body. Hmm. Just sep like just seeped into the floor mm. and uh, m- m- my journey to try and um, get that back is 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 what began to unfold for me and you know i i was never sorry that i i didn't kill my dad i, I didn't really think about it in those terms the angst that i was dealing with was the fact that i was unable to protect my mom yeah. right right and so the journey began. I remember sitting out on the stoop wow. of our walkout and uh, my grandfather showing up. I, I don't know who called him. Like, was it my right. dad to say, hey, look, you know, we're, we're in dire straits here. Come and get the kids. Uh, or if it was my mom, Pat, come and get the kids. Dibby's on the war path, like blah, blah, blah. But I remember him coming. We were sitting on the steps. I had my sister on one side, my little brother on the other. And my grandfather just walked past us, didn't say a word, and uh, came down and came down with the bunk bed dismantled uh, and tied it to the top of his old green Ford and put us in the back seat, finished tying it off. And I remember looking back at uh, the doorway as he drove away. And that was the last time I was to ever live with my parents. Mm. Wow. 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 I mean, it's and again, seven years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. We have listeners that are watching or listening to the show right now who can relate yeah. uh, to a childhood that was uh, violent, uh, where addictions were common. Um, and uh, certainly that sets you up in life, especially at an early age, to just have a lot more to overcome, right? You would then turn uh, in time to addiction, I would assume, to dull the pain. Well, the, the, there were a series of events that unfolded. Uh, you know, I, I lived in this quandary of mm. this incredible amount of admiration for my grandfather for having right. taken us in and providing a safe place for my brother and sister. Me, not so much. I wasn't concerned about it. Being the oldest, I yeah. think it's just an automatic role. You, you wanted them on. to be okay. Yeah, yeah. You Again, just take on. seven years old. Yeah, you become the parent, right? And um, wanting to do that. And then this ugly, ugly resentment Mm. and wanting to hold him, well, not wanting to, holding him responsible um, for my parents never having to get back together to uh, be a family. Mm. Right, right. You know? Yeah. And so at, at, at the age of 11, like I started really living a life that I wanted to live. Right. I, I wasn't following rules. You weren't my parents. You're not doing anything to help my parents get back together. Fuck you. I'm going to be who I am and I'm going yeah. to do what I yeah. wanted to yeah. do. Started staying out, getting in with the wrong crowd at yeah. an early, early age. Yeah. And then <clears throat> got molested by a neighbor, mm. a female neighbor. And man, did that lead me down some ugly paths, like, you know, that I'm not proud of, but uh, they're a a real part of my life, right? And it it was at the age of uh, 11, and we're playing hide and go seek in a friend's basement, and his dad was a contractor, and Mm. I was sitting in a closet hiding closeted right <laughs> i think a whole new term not what you might be thinking <laughs> one of those things yeah you're coming out of yeah, the yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah yeah and i i remember banging my head against like a, a doorknob and thinking what the hell's a doorknob doing in a closet and fig fig frigged with it and opened it up and a light comes on and there's these cases and cases of liquor mm-hmm and like I thought, whoa. So I went and got my buddy and said, look what yeah. I found. And he said, oh, like, yeah, yeah. And so I opened a bottle and filled a, a, a little Pepsi bottle up with it and headed down to the park and drank that. Hmm. 
glory. <laughs> <laughs> no more pain. Yeah. Right. Right. No more pain. Here I was numbed to the ning ning, yeah. like not having to worry about anything because yeah. I couldn't feel it. Yeah. yeah. But that's uh, yeah, the, the, the numbing factor, right? Like how many times have we talked about the fact that we just, even on the reflection show we just did a couple weeks ago, that uh, uh, folks will do anything. Uh, sometimes innocent distractions, uh, sometimes just throwing themselves more into their work or into activities or, or activities that we would consider socially acceptable. Uh, and then there's the things that we consider not socially acceptable that we throw ourselves into all just to forget. I, I don't know that we throw ourselves into those mm, because there's there's right. a degree of, of cognizance. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, you're right. But we, we get dragged into it That's because better. they're they're quiet numbing agents. See, yeah. we refer to all of those elements as uh, STURBs, short-term energy relieving behavior. Mm. Oh, interesting. And yeah. that's what we embrace. We, right? we, right? uh, we, we, and it, just because this ties into this, it's, it's, uh, we mentioned that there's connections to both of us. Uh, and for me to maybe take a second to share the connection you and I have, uh, because it fits into what you were just talking about. And that was, uh, you were listening to, to the podcast, the episode, episode four, uh, early episode, yeah, episode where four, I tell your story. I tell yeah. my story. Death and I, found and, me. Yeah. Death yeah. found me. And one of the things that I talk about in the episode is about, I, I talk about the number of people that have died, including an uncle who was murdered. Uh, beaten to death outside of a bar and and uh, um, you reached out to me and you know by chance is your uncle Terry and I was like yeah like and you were like well he and I we we party together we he was my brother and and we were yeah. like, I, and I remember my head spinning in that moment uh, and it took us a bit to get connected we, we to to get together and, I, and we were at an event um, uh, not that long ago where I said listen I really want to hear from you and you know tell me a bit of like you must know about my family and like that and you made what was such an obvious comment now that I think about it but in the moment this is where coming from a guy who you know be, you know kind of got clean stopped drinking and all that stuff at 16 i forget this in the addiction world is you said well uh terry and i didn't sit around and talk about family uh <laughs> that's the whole reason we were addicts we were, we're getting together we were trying to, to not we talk were about trying, exactly we yeah. were avoiding that we we're using yeah. drugs and alcohol to not deal with the pain in our lives and it was like such an obvious moment for me mm. yeah. yeah one of those one of those ahas right Right, exactly, exactly, as to how that is about. But there was that connection, and then it turned out that you know my uncle and your sister were married, and uh, your you know, and and there's lots of stories of of my uncle that I am aware of that your family, you or your sister, were very much involved in those experiences, uh, which was very validating for me because there isn't anyone in my life who has that experience even i don't as much i don't speak to my 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 other really the rest of the family and my mom's gone so I, there's nobody that i can sit back and go oh yeah you knew a family member and stuff like that and it was always interesting as we've been unpacking that together yeah. uh, absolutely that search right you see but again it's for completion yes right you know we don't know that that's what we're looking for because right. we've been so conditioned not to deal with stuff i remember right. posting on my on, on one of my social media platforms if this this sounds uncomfortable. We need to talk. Hmm. Here's a cookie. Go watch TV. Okay. Think about that for a second. You turn to your parents with any degree of angst. Hmm. Here's a cookie, honey. Go watch TV. Right. You're right. being told yeah. not to feel bad. Yeah, bury right. that. Oh. Grieve alone. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So true. You know, it's not okay to feel and add to that again, I don't mean to harp on it, but I think men have been raised, you know, we talk about the strong silent type, right? We're supposed to be strong. We're not supposed to feel, you know, you oh, you hurt yourself, just rub some dirt on it kind of thing. And yeah, yeah, uh, man Steve up. who's here today. Steve's here. Steve. Hey. Hey, there's Steve. Uh, when Steve talked about his uh, journey uh, in the world of sports, growing around a lot of uh, sp you know folks in that space. Uh, there was a lot of shame attached to any demonstration of emotion or feeling bad or whatever you were considered soft and the rest of it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and, and I think it was, uh, I forget where I heard this, but it's time to advocate for, a, 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 as opposed to strong and silent, which is killing men. The rate of suicide among men is much higher than among women. And, and I think part of it is because men don't talk. We, we often uh, where, where women 
traditionally, or at least the statistics would tell us, are more open and, and typically have a stronger support network. Guys don't. Uh, and it's literally killing us that it's time to advocate for a brave and open type of masculinity uh, where this kind of thing yeah. Yeah. is courageous. normal. It's courageous, yeah. but it's normal that this is talking about your shit isn't weakness. Yeah. Uh, it's actually courage and strength to say, I got some shit I don't know what to do with and I need some help. Yeah. Right? But you see, like those are the things, right? The courage to go first. Mm. It's what provides a safe space for people who are suffering right. to take their masks off. And some people connect for the very first time ever in their lives. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like that's sad, right? Like yeah. they can't take their hurt they can't take their brokenness anywhere they sit yeah. and suffer yeah yeah because they don't know what to do they don't know who to t- who to turn to yeah how many mm-hmm. times in our work i mean we primarily are in our in our business our other business we do a lot of executive leadership business coaching so people are coming to us with business and leadership challenges and yet how often have you heard, have I heard the phrase, I've never told anyone yeah. this before. Yeah. And they start sharing uh, because they feel comfortable, they feel safe, uh, start sharing about challenges that are not business related, that have nothing to do with the bottom line or you know business growth from year to year. It's all about their private pain. Think about that. How can you, how can you lead people if you're not leading from a place of authenticity mm. and so much like, you know, we want to textbook everything and we want to walk through things without really having to deal with them. Yeah. And we put on this face like, you know, I made it through that. Like, I'm good. Everything is OK. And you haven't dealt with a damn thing. Right. Like, you're still anchored to yeah. all of the same pain that everybody else is. And the, the more The more men begin to stand up and share their stories and talk about this thing, that's where leaders are created. Right, right. Because now they're dropping the baggage that's kept them trapped and locked, unable to really empathize yeah. with 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 a client base empathized with uh with employees you know no it's it's this is the way to do it and it's the hard ass you know don't take this personally it's just business mm. right, right 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 it's just so okay so we are uh we we get this comment all the time uh from listeners to the show the vulnerable the openness that we are sharing our journey very openly um on living yeah. richly. Yeah. Um, this episode almost didn't happen. And as much as you and I found that we had a connection that we didn't, neither one of us knew was there. I knew who you were. We had, you know, for years had been in kind of same ner- networking circles. I didn't know you at all really, other than to the first time we met the two of you have a history together. <laughs> and I remember the first time even bringing up your name and saying, Oh, I'm going to get together with uh, like Don's listen to the show and this is going on and mentioning it to you. And you were like, yeah, we'll have fun with that. Uh, uh, right. But there, there is a healing that's happened here. Yep. Um, and I don't want to speak for either of yours, but I want to, I want us to talk about it. And I, you know, I'm, I'm if, if we're not comfortable sharing about it, edit, <laughs> Steve, Steve will let it out Steve, this whole section. Steve we can will, work wonders yeah. in post production. <laughs> but, but, but I'm, I'm setting this up because I, I, it's important for our listeners to hear yeah. this is the journey that we are on. Still and on. and Very two, cool. two, three years ago, you couldn't. I don't think be at the place that you could sit at the table and have this conversation and the healing that's happened for you. So the, yeah. I, I put enough words in your mouth, yeah. maybe, maybe from the perspective of the two of you, why don't you share a little of that journey? Well, uh, Donnie and I, you, you and I go way back and uh, I, I promised at the top of the show, I'd try to call you Don more, but uh, <laughs> we spent, I don't know, uh, a long time together back in church days, uh, even before I would go into the ministry and become a pastor and launch uh, my church, which you were a part of. You were part of that founding group. Uh, you and I were part of the uh, basically the church band, right? Uh, this is this was uh, church music, like most people don't rock and roll. It's like rock and roll church music. It with, was it was a smoking band. It was a smoking band. Let's it was be fair, right? with no smoking. With with no smoking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. That we know. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, it might have been happening yeah, elsewhere. Yeah. But Don, you were the drummer. You were, right? An, an amazing drummer. Um, and back in the day, people might find this 
hard to believe, but I was sporting hair with about halfway down my back. Well, you were too. You had a mane that was like more impressive than yours ever was. Yeah, a cat, exactly. The lion. Uh, the big red mane that you used to sport. And uh, I had a mulatastrophe that I sported for far too long, long <laughs> after it was still in style. Um, and we spent, because of our work pre-launching my church and then after, we spent even more time together. We would spend literally hours and hours together every week, yeah. both in band rehearsals and then at the services and uh, uh, outings and and the rest of it. And uh, those were amazing days that didn't end well. Um, I was a younger leader, uh, didn't know what I was doing, uh, made a lot of mistakes, uh, unfortunate mistakes. And our relationship uh, kind of parted ways in a in a not so good way. Mm. I like I, I don't know that I remember that. I you know, um I, I think there was a natural separation simply because of things that were unfolding in my life, things that were unfolding in yours. Yeah. Um let it be known here right now that there there was never any animosity right. uh on, on on my part. No, same. And yeah. and and I think I I think because I was able to see how trapped you were. Hmm. Like if if we go right back and we look at how we were even requested, like there there was Don McDougall, Fred Nezrella, yeah. and myself, yeah. and we had made a commitment to live openly. Like yeah. even back then, even back then, didn't even know what that meant, did we? We didn't know what that meant when we said it. Well, I I, I found out pretty quickly because uh, I was asked to kind of host a men's group and mm-hmm. I did and because it was at my place and I was sharing first unabashed mm. transparency this is what you're getting this is who I am yeah. that was the last meeting that our team ever had <laughs> wait <laughs> no I don't that, know no, open. Okay. yeah yeah I, I like to think I, 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 I like to think because like it was so challenging they yeah. couldn't come up with anything better yeah. you know but it was the reality in my life so you know um, I it was part of your wedding party I remember you know, so when, when you think back to that, and, and I watched you come up in the church, like I, I watched you take on the worship team leader role before yeah. you ever stood in, stepped into pastor, uh, like the pastoring role, yeah. you know, and uh, you just always a go-getter, mm. always a go-getter. And, and I always admired that, but also realized what kind of trap you were living in at the same time. Cause I was working through a whole bunch of stuff on, on my own front. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like, no, yeah. I, I always look back at our relationship with incredible, incredible fondness. Yeah. There's lots yeah. of, lots of great memories. I remember when you brought up that you had connected with Don, it wasn't so much Don. There was a mixture there. One is that I felt, wow, he, I don't know if he'll want to talk to me after all these years. Two, uh, my experience uh, after leaving the church world like yours, and uh, we just did a show with the four preachers, the four ex-preachers, right, on reinventing yourself. And um, all of us experienced leaving that world to be very, very difficult. And that there's a small percentage of people that are loving, supportive, compassionate. Mm, the vast majority, there's a lot of judgment. There's a lot of ostracizing. There's a lot of, you're now on the outside. Um, And so most of my experience with former church people uh, was not positive. And so I when I first (laughs) text back and forth with you, I'm like, hey, Don, so heads up, this has been my experience. So I just want to be honest with it. And if you're still in that space, whatever, then you don't feel you need to connect with me. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. You answered back and said, yeah, I don't, I don't put up with that bullshit either. No, like, because it was, it was never about that, right? And, and, and I thought, man, like what a journey he's, he's already traveled to be that upfront in regards to the relationships he's looking to maintain or even reignite, like, you know, get rid of the shit. Like, you know, I'm dealing with some poison in my life right now and it doesn't really matter Mm -hmm. who embodies that poison. Like you need to distance yourself from it regardless of who it is. And and I think it's so powerful and why I wanted to highlight that, you know, as we move back into conversation about grief, this was important, I think, to, to talk about because 
because we do talk about so often on this show that it's important to set those boundaries and set those expectations. And you did as you came back into that uh, connection and relationship with you. It's also interesting as I listened to the two of you, how, you know, you were sharing how you were feeling like this was how it didn't end well. And you said, well, that's my perspective is this. Isn't this true even in grief or in loss anyway, uh, where often when there's loss and it's loss with uh, in, in terms of relationship, our perception of what that loss is and someone and the other person's perception may be very different experiences. Mm, absolutely. Right? The stories we tell uh, ourselves. The stories we well, tell it's ourselves. the stories we tell ourselves and what we believe others want to tell us. Mm. Right. You know, right. Right. It, w- without really wanting to go find out because like, geez, heaven forbid I build this on truth. Mm-hmm. Heaven forbid I build <laughs> right. this on honesty. Uh, right. Oh my God. I have an image to yeah. uh, uphold yeah. here. Even if the image is, because for me, for years, uh, the, the deep self-loathing I developed for myself and it didn't, by my mid twenties, mm-hmm. I, I always had that, uh, that, I don't know, that voice speaking yeah. to me. And then it was my own voice, but it only got worse over time because I, I, I felt more like a fraud more and more. Um, and, and so mm-hmm. the stories, you know, even our situation and how things unfolded, uh, that was just more evidence that I'm a bad guy, that I'm, that I fucked up yeah. and that anyone who gets close to me gets hurt. Yeah. That was part of the story. Yeah. Right. And I, I, again, we want to get back to the whole, uh, well, we're talking about grief and loss we are in many ways here. Absolutely. Like this is, right? we this are, is, it's, it's, it's undeniable. Yeah. Right. But yeah. like, these are all the uncomfortable things that people just want to cloak, just want to put away. Yeah. So to our, uh, uh, audience, our listeners, um, I told Donnie as we were sitting down to start recording this episode that we know you're going to benefit from this show. But if we can be a little bit self indulgent, uh, there's healing and redemption happening in this conversation even now. And in the conversation we had not long ago, uh, over coffee after many, many years of wow. uh, not seeing each other. Yeah. Like if, think about it really. Like I, you know, I, I, I didn't think about it because w- when you experience true connection, mm. when you experience instant healing, mm. and, and, and that's available when somebody simply is willing to give that a second chance, yeah. Yeah. you know, like it, it, and any, any discomfort just kind of seeps, yeah. like just it dissipates, right? It, it, it's gone. Yeah, absolutely. It, absolutely. It, it, wow. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, and again, just one last thought, or I remember sitting down for coffee. The you started us, this. You, yeah, you this let us great. down this path. Three, three, of us, three of us sat down for coffee. And again, you and I are obviously very close and know each other uh, extremely well. Uh, and uh, I remember... Um, at one point I needed to go and I said, okay, I need to go now. And I was expecting you to say, yeah, yeah, this has been great. And yet you were, you were like, ah, let's stay. And I, and the thought that went through my mind is, oh, there's some beautiful healing happening yeah. here. Yeah. And I, I remember leaving there so excited, not even for any of the, anything to do with me and Terry and my family. The most excited I was, was, oh, there's some healing happening here between the two of you. And I thought that was so beautiful to, to see that happening. For, for your great friend. Yeah. Right. Someone you care exactly. deeply about. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. He may have shared stories with you that like I'm unaware of and yeah. not that they're important yeah, because he got jerk. to share them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Further rack, yeah, you, there's not but, been any of that. Yeah, oh, the only you story I stole and we're not going to tell it on the show but the story of the Christmas float that story <laughs> yeah, that's that story is yeah, legendary no, is and I have told it everywhere no, I go. You can, yeah, no, that's you can good. Google that or for 14.99 <laughs> <laughs> Send me a private message. Yeah, join our Facebook group, our private Facebook oh, group, and we wow. make sure the Exclusive story there. Content Exclusive in the Facebook content. group, and that'll Member be there. Only. Um, somebody is sitting down with you. Uh, so, two things I want to ask. Uh, one is just the distinction you made it very clear to us uh, at the beginning of our show, just before we went on air, about the distinction between counselor and uh, specialist, yeah. mm. and using that language. I'm curious about that. Uh, but then this, well, so maybe I'll start there. The other one's a bit of a deeper question. So. I'm I'm an educator. Mm. Like the information I've gotten access to will serve anybody who's willing to pick it up and and apply. Mm. They they don't necessarily need me. The fact that I've mercilessly worked through all of this myself, which is what really uh, a- enables us to go first, like right, bravely, right. you yeah. know, to use your words yeah. uh, and, and, and create that space for people is one thing. But 
You know, I, and I, I tell people right up front, uh, I'm, I'm not a counselor, I'm not a therapist, yeah. but the education I will lead you to or provide you with is yeah. very therapeutic. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah. So they and, get to experience that, you know? Yeah. So as an educator, um, and I love that, that the truth can set you free, yeah. right? Uh, yeah, yeah. If you embrace it and do something with it. What would you say are some of the more, and I, I know I'm, I'm, no, that's I'm good. stepping in yeah, here, but okay. I, uh, what are some most, the most common misconceptions about grief and loss that you run into when you're helping people approach it differently? Well, I, I think it's universal because, um, it's the discomfort, it's the inability or just the fear Mm. Uh, let me let me address that. It's not fear. We often dress shame based emotions up as fear because that's publicly accepted. And fear shame, is better than shame. Yeah, mm. shame is something that we have been conditioned to yeah. never talk about. Right. right. So right. if if you start peeling back layers and looking at the things that you conjure up as being fearful for you, and and the second thing is you've lost people in the conversation because they don't give a shit what you're fearful of. They they're off conjuring up all the imagery and things that they're fearful (laughs) of yeah you know right so when when you look at that but getting back um to answer that uh and how did i get lost in this i hate that when i make a point common misconception yeah the common misconception is that we have to do this alone Mm. and uh, we don't so you know the the skills that we and and I think this applies in regards to anybody and, and what they do comes from a listening perspective. Like yeah. we, we hear what people say, we listen for what they don't, mm. because those are the things that are going to provide you with the keys to some of their pain. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so they won't talk about it. They'll skirt around it. And, uh, you know, so the, the common thing is just how skilled everybody is at not dealing with their emotional tension. Yeah. I think one of the skill sets is it's highly attuned or highly uh, developed in most people is avoidance. Yeah. Right. Avoiding what they need to face. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we just did an episode with a great client friend of ours, Sophie Perizier, and uh, uh, on, on lessons in leadership. She uh, health care for over 25 years as a nurse. She ran the Montfort uh, emergency department for four to five years, now runs a large local law firm. I mean, uh, I tell people everywhere she's probably one of the most sophisticated in the top 1% of leaders that I've ever had the privilege of working with. Uh, and she talks about just do hard, do the hard thing yeah. and how she embraced that from an early age. And what that did was develop in her resilience and strength and the belief that <clears throat> no matter what shows up in her life, I got a track record of doing hard shit, yeah. but when we avoid the hard thing, right? We think it's soft to go first. We think it's soft, but we actually remain soft when we don't do the hard thing. It's like a muscle that never gets mm-hmm. right challenged. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it, it kind of goes soft on you. Yep. Right? Yep. It's never worked. It's never worked. It's never had to. Yeah. 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 And, and there's only there's every, everybody around you is encouraging you to remain that way because the minute you step out of that and become an example of somebody who's been willing to talk about really uncomfortable things that you've been set free of, all of a sudden they're down this comparison path, mm. right? you know, and, and that shit starts tying into our competency levels, yeah. right? Yeah. When we're uh, unaware of stuff, like we even have expressions for it, like ignorance is bliss. <laughs> Right. Think about that. Yeah. Like, you know, and then some asshole like me comes along and makes you aware of something and all of a sudden like, whoa, whoa, yeah. I wish I was. That's there's, uncomfortable. There's no bliss anymore. Right. Where did the bliss <laughs> go? The bliss. Yeah. So yeah. now I'm consciously incompetent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How right. yeah. comfortable is that? Right. 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 Nobody likes to feel incompetent. No, no, no. no. Um, we've got people listening uh, who without doubt are dealing with all kinds of different types of grief and loss. Uh, maybe uh, if you would to even uh, the camera over uh, to the right here that uh, maybe speak to the camera, speak to those that might be listening right now that are at the early stages of they, they know that they need to do something with this grief and loss, but they don't know what, what would be those, uh, those first, uh, what, what would you say to them? I think the first thing Rob would be, um, acknowledge where you are Mm. because 
until you acknowledge it, there won't be a wrestle for you to get to a place of acceptance. Mm. Uh, reach out. If, if you want to reach out to me, please feel free to do that. I know there will be a link in, um, in, in this episode somewhere for you to reach out. Have a read through my bio. And here's what I'll be able to guarantee you with. I might not be the one to help you. But after being in this business for the amount of time I've been in, I know someone who will, and I'm not afraid to connect that dot. Mm. So reach out. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. Um, and, and again, for folks that are, um, there's dealing with it, there's dealing with it. We've talked about avoidance, yeah. hiding, numbing, right? Then there's a, an awakening that starts to happen an awareness that starts to come, um, and and I've um, in my journey, I've come to realize I used to think that the past was something you get over, right? Yeah, that 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 was the sum total of it. You get over your past shit. And what I've come to realize, yes, there are there's trauma we need to heal from. There are unresolved issues that often we're waiting for an outside source to help bring closure to. Whether or not that outside source or other person is able to help us come to closure, closure really belongs to us. That's our work to do. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, yeah, I just push me, push because, back. Yeah. Well, because when I hear that, right? <laughs> yeah. Like seeking closure. Man, people have been living closed up for way too long. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's strive for openness. Mm. Let's strive for like letting light into the Love dark that. places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what so it's good. About. Yeah. Right, right. And it, and that's a journey that's that only you can Absolutely. do for yourself. And so for me, the past now is in my past. Yes, there are things that I wish were different, mm-hmm. uh, and that I held myself to tremendous judgment against. And I've come to forgive and learning to continue to forgive as more and more layers uh, become. Uh, I, 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 I become aware of them, uh, but there's also in in my past, everyone's past, um, the seeds of greatness, the seeds of growth, the seeds of who we truly are that have been with us all along, but maybe got lost in 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 all of that. Right? Um, uh, how how do you help folks? move from i mean just healing and alone uh and and acceptance and and is is an amazing experience how do you channel that into deeper personal growth well i i don't i just create that space and i ask the hard questions right because like you know i've specialized in doing my work one-on-one because i just don't think people are comfortable enough to open up to a depth where they can get some real help in a group setting right Right, right. It's tough. you know, yeah. So, and 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 I learned this early on because I'd meet people in in a public place like a coffee shop to have the initial conversations and watching people break down. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and here everything in me is trying to get people to connect to that honest place in them, and the conditioning kicks in. Mm. Like I need to be strong. Yeah. I I can't break down in public like this. Like so, it's it's really being able to. Sit and listen, hear what they aren't saying, yeah. and connect them to the pain, letting them know that they'll be able to work through that. Yeah, yeah, it's powerful. And 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 experience wellness, yeah, wholeness. Yeah, I got one more question for you, and I know that our time is almost up here. This is we are clearly going to have to have Don back. Uh, well, and, that'll, uh, and that's okay. Uh, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> absolutely. We, Thank you. We need to have you come back. Absolutely. It's, it's, there's so much around grief. Before, I know which practice. question you're going to okay, ask. Before, yes. can we? I, I, I'm. Can you give us the cold notes version? Uh, you've made available a free ebook that we're yes, going to make available you. to our listeners. Um, and a uh, free preview will go, first go to our Facebook group, uh, right? We get the exclusive content first. Uh, but a, 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 an ebook on overcoming loss and grief, what can they expect to find in there? They're going to find uh, just the description of the six myths that keep them trapped. Okay. You know, and it's how we've been conditioned. Yeah. And when you think about this, you know, we start taking in our values and um, at, at a very young age. Hmm. From the people we love and trust the most, our parents. Hmm. Now, let me ask you a question, gents. Were your parents equipped with any form of truth to set you on a <laughs> pathway to resilience and freedom? Right. right. Mm. You know, like, and, and there's a bold. I plead the fifth. Yeah, there's a, there's a bold universal truth. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. yeah. That we all it it it's the the way maybe i i view the world the way i i view things i don't view things 
for me, it's always the flip of what it is. Right. It's what could be. Yeah. Like, you know, it. we're not equipped to deal with loss and with deep emotional trauma. Mm. In fact, the exact opposite, we're conditioned not to. Right. right. So. Right. We get to that place. It's and swimming then upstream, what do we do? isn't it? Yeah. Really and and, and people, upstream. people really kind of reinforce it because if you do make a decision to share something intimate with somebody, mm. they're most apt to tell you things that, although are intellectually accurate, will yeah. be completely void of any, any, any friggin' emotional value. Here's a perfect example. We break up with a girlfriend. What are your buddies telling you? Move on. Yeah, there's more. Yeah. Plenty of fish in the sea. Right. Like, you know, all of those terms. Yeah. And like we get bombarded with them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So good. Uh, so yes, we're going to offer that uh, that book, the ebook, the twenty two page ebook uh, to our listeners. We're going to start. We've mentioned it a number of times. We're going to be introducing that in our Facebook group. If you aren't a part of the face group, uh, a group, I encourage you to go to the website livingrichly.me. You're going to find that information there. We'll yeah. talk about that again as we wrap up here. Last question for you: uh, What does living richly mean to you? Pathway to freedom. Hmm. It's. Finding a community of people who are willing to accept the shit that their lives are made up of (laughs) and move through it despite some of the discomfort. Mm. Standing in a realistic position and saying, here's who I am. Yeah. And not being apologetic about it. You know, that's the community that I want to be part of. Mm. That's the, that, that's, that's the, that's the pool I want to swim in. I love yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so good. And, Powerful. and part of why we launched the Facebook group is we wanted to provide a place where I recognize the community itself. There's been some incredible sharing that's been happening in there and people have been sharing a bit of their story. Yeah. I think part of the, the kind of the side effect of that group will be people who will connect to each other. And I'm hoping there'll be people that'll build relationships outside of even just the Facebook group with other people in there. So again, if you haven't, I want to encourage you to uh, check out, uh, go to our website, livingrichly.me and you will find out all the information about how you can become a part of uh, the uh, the Facebook group. Uh, we are so excited with some of the stuff that we're going to be doing in 2024. So we encourage you to like and subscribe. Uh, certainly share and comment on uh, this episode if it has spoken to you. We are excited about not only just a 22 page uh, uh, ebook that you're providing, but stay we're going to stay tuned be, for part two. Yeah, stay tuned <laughs> for uh, part two of this episode. Donnie, this has been amazing. Uh, it has amazing. been great, and I want to yeah. thank you so much for your openness uh, for coming in here. You made the comment about go first. Uh, You're not afraid to go first and to share your own story and your own struggles. And through that, you open up the door and give people permission to do the same. This has been absolutely incredible. Really rich. Thank you everyone for taking the time to listen today. Uh, We really do encourage you to just get out there and live your best life.